guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be doing a small review of all the new makeup that I recently purchased. And I will link that video down below because I did do an unboxing video of all the new makeup that I bought. But in today's video, I thought it'd be nice to do like a small review because I have been using them for about a week now. And I'm going to tell you guys which ones I'm going to be returning and which ones I'm going to be keeping. And so let's get started before this intro gets really long. So I do want to mention that I used everything in my haul video except for these two items. And these are the Origins of Perfect World SPF 40 Moisturizer and the SPF 20 Eye Cream. It's been raining here every single day and there's barely any sun out. So I haven't really had a chance to be using heavy SPF. I do use a tinted moisturizer that has SPF 20 for a daily basis. So I figured that was probably enough it's probably not so I didn't use these yet I can't really say anything good or bad about them but I'm gonna move on to the things that I actually use and for starters I'm going to be talking about these two um, tinted moisturizers that I got so the first one is a tinted moisturizer oil-free it's from Laura Mercier and it's the um, this is not the original I think this is the second one that they came out with they also have a luminizing one now which I also want to try but I'm going to be talking about the oil-free one and I'm going to also be talking about the MAC Prep and Prime BB Beauty Balm with SPF 30. I bought this one because I thought it was oil-free. It was going to look better in the summer because usually when the summer comes, I get a lot more oily and greasy and it's just not a very pretty look on me. It just looks very shiny and I don't like that. It kind of looks like I'm dirty. And then I also got this one because I thought it was SPF 35. It is the same-ish size as this one. It's a little bit smaller, but it was a lot cheaper than the Laura Mercier one, so I decided to give that a try. But at the end of the day, I figured that I like the original formula better, so I'm going to be returning two of these. This is the original formula, so it comes in like a tannish colored tube. I'm in the color Bisque, and this is just my favorite tinted moisturizer ever. It has beautiful, beautiful. It has beautiful, buildable coverage. Wow, I just combined those two words together. But yes, it has a beautiful and buildable coverage, which I really like. I'm someone that likes a light coverage, but if I have to, I want to build it up. Occasionally, I will have a giant zit in like the middle of my forehead, so I can use this to build it up. Um, these two, I just realized that it just doesn't compare. This one blends in a little bit awkwardly. I feel like this one goes on a lot patchier than the original formula, which is what I don't like and I also think the color is a little bit different this one seems a little bit more yellow and like darker than the original one this color match is definitely a lot better and a lot more precise on my skin tone so I like that one and then compared to the MAC one this I just feel like is really thick it's also really like yellow and tan it just doesn't match my color correctly and I was debating on just getting the right color because this is overall cheaper and it has higher SPF but I just don't really like this as much as the Laura Mercier one. I feel like I've been forcing myself to try this, but I just end up going for this one. So I'm going to be returning the both of them and just keeping the original formula. All right, now moving on to highlighters. So I did purchase this highlighter from Sephora. This is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the color Prismatic Amethyst. So it's kind of like a purpley-ish pink color. Um, the packaging is really pretty, which I already mentioned in the unboxing video. It's just a very pretty packaging. I've normally been using the MAC um, little highlighter. This one is called um, Trip the Light Fantastic Powder, and it's in the color Luna Luster. I think this was part of the uh, Star Trek collection, but normally I've been using this, and this is what it looks like. It is just a really light highlighter. It's not something that like Jeffree Star would use because he would use something really blinding and just bright and shiny. I'm someone that uses a little bit more like um, a natural finish, I guess you can say. I do like shimmer, but I like something a little bit more natural on me. It's kind of like where you can barely see it, but you can't see it at the same time. Yeah, that is my look. So I normally use this, and I was thinking that I wanted to purchase this because I thought it was a really cool color. It's purple. I mean, who has purple highlighter? I'm wearing it today, and again, you can barely you can barely tell because I use a very light hand on my highlighters, but in person you can definitely see that there's a little bit of a pink and like purpley sheen, but it's not purpley enough where it looks like I bruised my face. You know when that happens when you use some colors that are a little bit too muddy and too purpley, it looks like you just have a bruise on your face, but this one is a very pretty color, it's very soft, and I freaking love that about it. It doesn't kick up a lot of product, um, not 
for you know not when you compare it to your normal Becca let's say champagne pop that one kicks off a lot of powders I feel like this one doesn't really do that as much this one the packaging is still pretty clean looking so I am going to be keeping this and I absolutely love it speaking of highlighters I'm gonna talk about two sample highlighters that I got in my last video I talked about this highlighter I got as a sample from Sephora this is the Clinique chubby stick what is this called? Sculpting Highlight Little Stick. This is what it looks like. It's just a really kind of pinky, shimmery highlighter. And I normally use this one. This one is also a sample that I got at Sephora. And I've been using this for like a year and a half now and it's still going pretty strong. This one is the Benefit What's Up Highlighter. And that's what it looks like. It is very skinny but it's like perfect for the down the bridge kind of highlight and where your brow bone is. It just fits perfectly. Um, it's a really nice kind of champagne-y color. It's very shimmery very reflective and it's super duper creamy so it just rubs on perfectly but I realized that I like this one a lot better because the color is a lot more pinky it just looks better on me so I will be keeping this I'm not gonna return it because it is a sample anyways but I feel like I will eventually buy the full size of this if I ever run out of it this is very very smooth it's even smoother than this it's very soft so it's a very easy kind of like draw on highlight I have this on my nose today and um, like down the bridge of my nose I also did a little bit of contouring just for the sake of a video but I do like this a lot more this color is kind of like too white for me it's too light too white I did think I like this but when I have a comparison of like a very pinky nudish kind of skin color highlight this one looks a lot better and it looks a lot more natural moving on to concealers I recently purchased the matte pro longwear concealer because I heard great great things about this concealer so I decided to try it I'm in the color NC30 but I'm normally using the Makeup Forever Full Cover Waterproof Concealer and I'm in the color... Doesn't say the color on the packaging, does it? No, it doesn't. Anyways, I'm normally using this concealer. I really like it. It's just a really small tube and it's pretty pricey for a concealer. It is very buildable, which I absolutely love because like I mentioned, I normally have like random little ginormous zits in the middle of my forehead and this one does cover it so I absolutely love it the color is a pretty good match to my actual skin tone and I just absolutely love this concealer so I decided to try the MAC one because I heard more people raving about this and more people loving this than this concealer so I decided to try it now I'm going to be returning the MAC concealer because there's just a lot of things that I don't like about it. First of all, the color is again really, really yellow. It's kind of a lot darker, a lot yellowier. Um, the undertone is off from my skin tone, but it's weird because the NC30 foundation, like the color of it, it fits my skin tone. So, you know, I would assume that NC30 in the concealer would also fit, but it doesn't. It's a lot more yellow. And I really don't like the pump on this concealer because you cannot control how much concealer you want. Normally, I take like the smallest dot in the entire universe. This one comes in like squeezy tube, so I can squeeze out the tiniest dot ever for concealers. But for this, as soon as you pump the pump, no matter how softly you pump this pump, it just squirts concealer out everywhere and then I'm left with like a whole chunk on my arm and I just have nowhere else to put it. I can't put it back into the bottle, so I end up just wiping it off on a tissue and that way I'm just wasting product. So I don't really like this, don't like the packaging that it's in. It's really hard, this cap also annoys me because you know, it's like one extra step that I have to do. I know, it's annoying. So I'm going to be talking about the MAC Liquid Last Waterproof Eyeliner. This stuff I haven't tried yet, but I know I love it because I've tried it before. I still have an old tube of it, which is this. But if I were to give a small little review, the only downside of this eyeliner is it kind of gets goopy by the time you reach, like, you know, the middle or the bottom of the bottle. It just gets really goopy. So if you're someone that wants, like, a really precise and thin wing, this might not be the product for you. But if you're wanting something that is completely waterproof, something that you can cry in, something that you can run, like, a Spartan marathon in, this is for you. I'm going to move on to eyebrows. I also purchased the MAC Waterproof brow set this is also part of the pro longwear um collection and i still have the packaging because i wanted to show you guys everything but this is what it looks like and i'm normally using the anastasia tinted brow gel in the color espresso this is the mac one is in the color broad broad why do i keep saying that this is in the color bold brunette i'm wearing the anastasia one today the one in the espresso color it's just a lot more natural it gives my brow like a lighter look I'm not sure if it's waterproof yet. I haven't tested it in the shower, which I might do sometime soon in like a close-up video. But um, this one is just, it's a lot darker and I do like it. It's a lot more 
like precise on my eyebrows the wand is a lot tinier which is why it's a lot more precise because I can get into the small cracks and I can get into the tail of my eyebrows without kind of like smudging it on my eyelids usually when I'm using the Anastasia brow gel it does get on my eyelids but it's a really easy cleanup I just take a cotton tip and I just clean it up but I will be keeping the MAC Pro Longwear eyebrow set because it is great I'm just hoping that when I test it out in the shower it will stay put on my eyebrows throughout the whole shower so I can take it with me to Hawaii so I purchased the MAC Fix Plus because everyone has been raving about this and I just never tried it throughout the years so I finally decided that I should go ahead and try this now I bought this mainly because this one is cheaper than the Urban Decay I normally use the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray this one has 4 fluid ounces and this one has 3.4 fluid ounces so the MAC one is a little bit smaller than the Urban Decay one the bottles look the same size though and I this one is obviously cheaper so I decided that I would potentially just try out the MAC one and if I like it then I won't have to spend as much money as I'm spending on the Urban Decay one so they don't really have such a big difference but for me I feel like when I finish using the Urban Decay one I'm just gonna stop buying it because like I said this one is a lot cheaper and why not use something that's cheaper and just as good right so I'm going to be keeping this one and the last thing that I want to talk about is this little sample this is the bite beauty sample that I got from Sephora well I don't know if it's considered a sample because I did trade it with a hundred points it's one of those hundred point perk kind of things but I really really actually like this I thought I wouldn't like the color because when I looked at it it was a lot more like purplier and redder than I thought it was but once I have it on the lips it's really pretty and I think this is one of those colors that would work well for the spring and it also would work well for the fall and going into the winter for the summer I feel like it's a little bit darker but I think that's okay because I mean who says there's certain colors for certain seasons right you can pretty much wear whatever color you want for whatever season I think I would be potentially repurchasing this in other colors as soon as I'm done with this or maybe even before I'm done with this I'll go out and buy more colors and yeah that concludes my review of all the new makeup that I purchased again I will link the video down below if you haven't watched my unboxing video of this makeup but I'll see you guys in my next video I hope you guys enjoyed this bye